We're going to move on to the lower uh, apophysial injuries now, and uh, this is this is essentially where the majority of our apophysitis injuries are occurring. Um, so in around the pelvis, there's a number of different areas. Um, essentially, wherever you have a bony bump, the iliac crest, uh, the anterior superior spine, the anterior inferior iliac spine, um, off the acetabular uh, ridge where the uh, one of the heads of the rectus femoris originates, and the ischial tuberosity, the pubic tubercle, um, uh, Iceland's at the fifth of the metatarsal, the severs, calcaneal apophysitis, and then um, uh, the inferior pole of patella, which is called sending Larson Johansson, and then obviously the tibial tuberosity with all Schutz letters. Two other areas are at the medial aspect of the femoral chondra where the adductor magnus attaches. Um, and this is more common where we'll see tug lesions or uh, cortical desmoids. And then at the back um, um, of the femoral condyle where the uh, medial gastroc originates is another area where you can have both tug lesions and cortical desmoids, which are benign fibrosseous lesions. So this was a 16 year old soccer player and this was kind of a chronic uh, hip pain. I apologize about the quality images, but what we're taking a look at here, these are exactly what um, their orthopedic spine colleagues are looking at in terms of determining how much growth is left in terms of the wrist or staging. This is the apophysis of the iliac crest, and you can see it coming along here. There's a space that goes all the way between. It's hard to see, but the space is actually widened here on the right, and this is where the patient's tender. This is the, uh, the origin site of the transversus abdominis, and essentially it's a traction injury. Um, this is one you can essentially manage um, uh, with load management. Um, now you can get an avulsion fracture of this. We'll show a case of that in a second. Um, the other one which can occur is from an iliacus traction, and that'll actually pull the um, iliac apophysis down. Um, because remember your iliacus meets up with your psoas, so it can actually be pulled down. But this one here is from the abdominal muscles that's pulling. And you can see that widening of the gap on the right side. This was a uh, traction of the, uh, so this was, sorry, this was an avulsion fracture of the iliac crest. This was a sudden pop. This was also a uh, soccer player. Uh, they presented to the emergency department and they had essentially a minimal displacement. Um, of the iliac crest. So typically occurs in running sports, you'll often see in cross country, you know, depending on where they are in season, you might want to get them to rest for a few weeks and then build back up. Um, if they have a competition, and this is one of the ones where you can, they can play through uh, as needed. Obviously the pain worsens, we might need to uh, typically re recommend they come back in for a reassessment. Um, and the differential here is an oblique strain or a hip pointer. Um, there, there have been uh, reported cases in the literature, um, not so much with the elite crest, but with the ACEs, which we'll take a look at next, uh, of developing an osteomyelitis. And, but the key difference there is these patients uh, will have, a, have their injury and then it will develop a fever. Um, so if the pain is increasing despite rest and they're feeling unwell or any kind of chill symptoms, uh, don't hesitate to think about osteomyelitis. We're not entirely sure how it seed, the bacteria seeds in, but um, there have been reported cases. And so this is case number uh, four. This is a 17-year-old soccer player with uh, left-sided groin pain. You see the bony edema. This was actually a pubic tu tubercle uh, apophysitis from traction of the adductor longus. Um, and uh, this can stay open um, uh, well into their 20s. Um, common obviously in soccer, but also in hockey. Um, other injuries in this area, in, in around this area are osteitis pubis, uh, stress fractures of the pubic or ischial ramus, and the um, obviously adductor tears can occur as well. Um, once again, these, uh, because they're a proximal muscle, we typically recommend a rest period of um, protecting that area of about four weeks. They can do active rehab during that time. Uh, very, very gentle isometric. They shouldn't be feeling any pain with the, uh, the exercises that they're doing in the first four weeks. And then after that, they can start progressing uh, with the exercises in terms of any kind of um, uh, return to place um, activity. Um, generally, I don't recommend that in the first six weeks. Um, so uh, depending on how they're progressing and the, how significant an injury it is, um, some, some of these can last up to six months.
This is what we are talking about before. This is an anterior superior iliac spine uh, avulsion fracture here. Uh, you can also get an apophysitis. Um, this is a CT, this is a slightly different patient, but you can see how these can get uh, displaced. The concern here is obviously you can get non-union, but when they get displaced, sometimes just by the, the amount of swelling and edema, they can cause compression of the lateral cutaneous femoral nerve, but they can also cause uh, issue, the yeah, second thing that can cause an issue is heterotrophic ossification in this area. And you can see from the first injury how that might occur. Uh, this is obviously the sartorial attachment. So it's very um, strap muscle that was involved with both essentially uh, flexing the hip and extending the knee with a slight bit of external rotation. Um, sorry, flexing the knee uh, and flexing the hip uh, with a little bit of uh, external rotation. Um, this is um, uh, obviously commonly injured in soccer. Uh, with the anterior superior spine, um, the other one that can occur in is with running, um, and they will be quite tender over the aces. So clinically, it's a clinical diagnosis. Obviously, there's an acute injury, you're concerned about avulsion, I would recommend getting an x-ray. Sometimes you'll pick these up in adults for other reasons, and you'll see a large bump over their aces, even though you might be examining their other hip. So you'll pick these up on AP pelvis. Um, surgery is rare, rarely required. Uh, it should be noted that the literature um, for pelvic uh, apophysial avulsion fracture is actually um, very encouraging for better outcomes. Um, uh, generally speaking, uh, they talk about displacement greater than a centimeter to greater than three centimeters. But uh, just to keep in mind, uh, especially if you're high end an athlete, you may want to get an orthopedic consult. Uh, experience in Canada, specifically in the Toronto area, has been that uh, that that is almost never the case that they will get um, uh, uh, surgical treatment. Uh, case number six. Uh, this was a, a I believe a 16 or 17 year old soccer player, um, and what you're taking a look here at is a sagittal MRI. Uh, you can see the femoral head, and you can see the rectus femoris attachment on the anterior imperial iliac spine. Um, this is a traction apophysitis. As you can see here on the axial, how much on the right side it's being pulled off, similar to what you would, might see expect with a tug lesion. So this is a traction apophysitis, um, and uh, you can see the edema in the bone both here on the axial, but also on the coronal here on the right side. So these anterior inferior x spine apophysitis. Um, once again, because it's a strong proximal mus muscle injury, um, you're looking at a longer period of time in terms of months. Once again, generally not trying to activate any kind of pulling on the apophysis for a period of about four weeks and then essentially gradually progressing with the rehab. Um, and then as you get close to three months, getting back into some more running activities. Um, here they talk about uh, considering the surgical repair at greater than one half centimeter. Case number seven, we got a 16 year old dancer and she's had posterior thigh pain for two months. And when you examine her, she's tender over her ischial tuberosity. Now, um, tendonitis is extremely rare in the pediatric population. That being said, they can get um, obviously muscle tendinous tears. And the, the, the key thinking here is depending on once again, their, their age development, um, if that um, physis between the bone and the apophysis is still open, the, because of the strength of the tendon relative to the, the bone, um, you're more likely to pull on the anthesis or the apophysis. So um, what you're looking at here is a coronal MRI and an axial MRI. And you can see here on the left that the ischial tuberosity is demonstrating some bony edema compared to the right. And you're seeing some cortical irregularity around the um, left ischial tuberosity here on the axial. This commonly occurs in, in dancers, ballerinas, and uh, other mixed uh, dance uh, performers. It um, can also occur in run, um, gymnastics as well as running sports. Um, they'll typically have a weak hamstring. And you can see where it gets tricky when you uh, essentially image these patients, uh, especially if it's after been after two or three months. 
they can actually develop some heterotrophic ossification and the, the um, issue to Rossi can look quite, quite abnormal. You can see here on the right, uh, it's quite irregular. Um, and it's actually, these, these have been, con been concerning for aggressive lesions on, on the MRI now um, um, uh, on imaging. So they, they end up getting advanced imaging. Um, I think we're far better now at this stage in terms of um, being able to differentiate using MRI uh, for these, but obviously the history and examination is important as well. Once again, because it's a proximal large muscle injury, we're looking at resting for two to three months. Um, vulsion fractures in this area. Um, this is this is probably the one area that um, in in Canada that we'll, we will essentially aim for surgical repair, especially if there's a one and a half or greater than two centimeter displacement. Moving down to the knee, um, this this um, some people may not have seen very much of this is a patellar polypopsitis, formerly known as sending Larson Johansson syndrome. The affects the inferior patellar pole in patients age seven to eleven, typically um, gymnastics, martial arts, football. Um, this is where it typically occurs, where you're doing a, a lot of kneeling um, and uh, squatting and lunging. Um, obviously, the differential here would be a patellar fracture uh, or a stress fracture. Um, osteochondritis dissecans is also something to keep in mind here as well. Um, studies have shown that for whatever reason, the, the, there is a prevalence um, with these patients to have tighter hamstrings. Um, so there's likely some, some form of muscle imbalance going on. Um, it may also be reactive uh, to the, the injury, however. Um, uh, these occasionally we will x-ray, very rarely would I say uh, MRI. Um, and these can be treated with activity modification. These are quite stable, so you can essentially manage these um, with load management. So when they're quite sore, you uh, ask the, um, the child and parent to have them refrain for sports. So an obvious one would be any kind of limping. We don't train or play that day. Or if it's really sore before we play or train, we don't play that day. If it's okay and we play and it's sore afterwards, then we just ice. And if it calms down, we continue with the training and playing as we normally would over the week. Obviously, if it st starts to persist over the course of the week, uh, then we might ask for a short period of shutdown. So this is something where um, it may persist over the time period where that growth plate is open, but we can continue to have them play during that time. Oshkid slatter, so tibial tuberosity apophysitis. So uh, this is the, the, the jumping apophysitis that um, most people either themselves or know somebody that has a essentially bony protuberance just below their kneecap. Um, and that's in keeping with that individual having a history of uh, Oshkid slatter or tibial tuberosity apophysitis. Now, this is where it's very important to understand that spectrum of injury because as we saw in the pelvis, um, a lot of these um, apophysites can actually avulse um, um, as opposed to just getting uh, a local injury, which would be the apophysitis. And it's the same here in the tubular tuberosity, but obviously this is involving your extensor mechanism. And so um, in the lesser cases where it's kind of just sore after training or sore after practice and it's tender on palpation, but the rest of their examination is normal. Um, apart from uh, just the tenders with tibial tuberosity, they're able to straight leg raise and extend their knee against resistance. Um, you can probably manage those with uh, load management. Now, if there's quite a bit of warmth and it's very tender to touch and they're having difficulty with any kind of straight leg raise um, or activation versus resistance, I would recommend imaging uh, some of these will have small uh, avulsion uh, fragments, which I would recommend treating with a longer period of rest, um, so four to six weeks to get it to calm down. Um, and also I would not have them uh, essentially return to sport in that four to six week period. Um, the concern is that when you get a traction apophysitis where it starts to separate uh, in the tibia tuberosa, um, it long-term results in biomechanical changes which can lead to the patient having um, chronic patellofemoral issues as an adult. The second problem is with the small avulsion fragments, but also with a, um, a, a chronic Oscar slatters which the patient has played through, the prominence can get quite large and they can continue to have issues with kneeling going into 
and throughout their entire adulthood. So this is not something to be ignored. This isn't necessarily something whereby you can always play through. I would use your clinical judgment, uh, clinical assessment and um, individual judgments to determine whether or not it's safe for them to essentially presume, resume play. Sievers or calcaneopophysitis, this is not a particularly, uh, would not be in keeping with the disease. Uh, it's kind of an old uh, term. Uh, it is an apophysitis of where the Achilles attaches into the calcaneopophysis and occurs with uh, a lot of running and jumping sports, very common in soccer. Um, the differential here, you got to keep in mind, once again, and these are overuse injuries, so they always want to keep in mind a stress fracture. An os trigonum, which will uh, essentially be at the back of the tail, as it can be sometimes confused. Uh, posterior impingement, rarely Achilles tendonitis. It's extremely rare in uh, um, in kids, um, and um, especially before the uh, before the age of fourteen. And plantar fasciitis is also fairly rare in in kids, um, but it can occur. Um, so if they have pain at the back back of the heel as opposed to under under the heel, um, so if the pain is anywhere from here up. It's no way it's plantar fasciitis. Um, I've kind of seen a trend uh, over a, the last 10 years um, with uh, clinicians not familiar with calcaneal apophysitis, um, more commonly referring to anything in around heel pain as plantar fasciitis. And then there's another proportion that will refer to it as an Achilles tendonitis. Um, Treatment activity modification. There, there's kind of poor evidence that we will, you know, classically would describe heel lifts and um, doing uh, gastroc and sole stretches. The, the bigger thing here, I think, is the is the load management. By all means, if the cost is an issue, there's no harm. Some patients will get quite a bit of comfort from from the heel lift, so there's no harm there. Um, it, this is something whereby you can have the player play through. Um, it's very, very, very rare. I surveyed um, a group of about 15 sports physicians in the Toronto area and um, with well over 100 years of experience and nobody had ever seen a um, apophysial either traction or avulsion injury of the calcaneal apophysis. That being said, um, once again, I recommend the load management of obviously the limping. I, I don't recommend the player train on that day. Um, but this is something that the, the players can essentially um, play on and off with this um, and train on and off with this, depending on the pain uh, over the course of uh, the year, year and a half to two years that that uh, apophysis, uh, physis is open. And finally, fifth metatarsal apophysitis are also known as Iceland disease. Uh, for, for it refers to a fairly rare uh, injury that occurs to kind of repetitive inversion stress injuries to the, the foot it occurs at the base of the fifth metatarsal it can be uh, confused with a uh, os vesselanum micro impingement um, perineal tendonitis uh, jones or stress fractures and cuboid avulsion fractures um, and these because they're in the foot they can take a long time to heal um, once again if there's any kind of limping i recommend protecting these uh, these patients with an air cast boot for a period of four to six weeks uh, finally, just going to show you a case of heterotrophic ossification. This is the x-ray initially of an avulsion of the psoas at the lesser trochanter. And this is the x-ray at three months. And you can see how it's kind of quite bulked up. The healing is actually fairly significant and substantial. Um, but what's interesting is these, these athletes will, <laughs> will initially have a normal hip examination and then have a loss of uh, extension and abduction and external rotation at the two and three month mark. So you really need to encourage rehabilitation in these patients. So in summary, um, you know, in the pediatric sports population, otherwise healthy individuals, you want to be considering the apophysitis as your number one injury differential. Because of these are overuse, you want to remember the differentials. You're always keeping in mind stress fractures and osteochondral defects or osteochondritis desiccans of the joints um, in or around. Um, you need to take a look at the range of motion uh, for these patients um, because they can have, once again, associated joint injuries. But also, like I said, uh, when you take a look at the healing of these patients, they can have significant deficits in range of motion if you're not rehabbing them appropriately. Um, consider the x-ray um, uh, if it's, uh, especially with acute injuries and you want to rule attraction, it, it can affect the prognosis.
And then uh, finally, when we talk about rust versus modification, um, it depends on the location and type of sport, but generally speaking, your larger proximal muscles, uh, your tibial tuberosity, and your medial epicondyle um, apophysitis are ones that you want to be considering that for. These are just essentially um, the summary of the um, avulsion or traction avulsion injuries noted in the literature. So you can see that there's very small caseloads um, reported. Um, I'd say that's uh, that are slightly more common than what's reported in the literature, but gives you an idea of what we're we're basing our recommendations on. So it's uh, quite limited. Um, I didn't talk today about vertebral ring or lumbar vertebral, but uh, those are uh, in spinous process. That's another area of uh, apophysial injuries that can occur that you want to keep in mind in terms of the differential for um, athletes, um, pediatric athletes with low back pain. Thank you very much.